Thank you. Mr. President and members of the legislature, I was given a piece of news which everybody will be aware of before the day is over. And although I'm mightily tempted to talk about it, I'm not going to at this time. And when you become aware of it, you'll know what I was referring to. My primary responsibility is here this morning while I'm on this floor dealing with what I consider to be a very bad piece of legislation. We don't always have the wherewithal to choose the circumstances under which we will do various things. At this point, there's something else I would rather be doing. But this is my primary responsibility for today, and I'm going to discharge it. It's not going to be any problem for me to talk away the rest of the day that we have for handling legislative matters. If the issue were not this serious, I would not be doing this. Maybe I wouldn't fight as hard if it was a one-time theft. But this is forever. The fiscal conservatives are entrusting $10 million without strings to a state agency which does not have the best record for prudent expenditure of the state's money. But you're giving it to them forever. But I want it crystal clear, not only that I'm against it, but I will do everything I can to oppose it. What could be achieved with $10 million? Some people will mention rural economic development. Now, for one of these big corporations, they might laugh at that. But in the same way that Warren Buffett, as rich as he is, wouldn't walk down the street and see a dime and not pick it up. It's like the little gecko said, oh, Governor, so you're so rich that if all you had to do was get out of your chair to get this amount of money, you would keep your seat. Well, no, you get out of your chair to get that money. In this set of circumstances, $10 million, which may not raise an eyebrow or turn a hair for one of these multi-million or billion dollar operations would mean a great deal if it was going for rural development in the state of Nebraska. How many of you would support spending $10 million for rural development? I'm going to ask some questions. I'd like to ask Senator Karpacek a question. Senator Karpacek, would you yield to a question? Yes, thank you. Senator Karpacek, would you agree to the expenditure of $10 million this session for rural economic development? Yes, sir. Thank you. I'd like to ask Senator Hansen, the younger, a question. Senator thank Hansen, you. would you yield to a question? For those who may not know why I said that, a couple of weeks ago a very revealing article was printed in the World Herald about his grandfather, and I think he is younger. And everybody's younger than I am. Senator Hansen, where is your district? Where, where, what city do you live in? I live in North Platte and represent Lincoln County. Is that considered a rural area? Uh, to some it is, to some it's not. It's, would, uh, would you support the expenditure of $10 million this session for rural economic development? Yes, I would. Thank you. I'd like to ask Senator Harms a question. See, this is how I build momentum One and, minute. and serve notice to the Appropriations Committee about, about what might be rolling. Senator, Senator Harms, Harms, would you yield to a question? Yes. Would yes, you I support will. the expenditure of $10 million this session for rural economic development? Yes, I would. Thank you very much. I don't see Senator Dubois, so I will have to go to Senator Loudon. Senator Loudon, would you yield to a question? Now, Senator yes, Loudon... Sir. He is so conservative as a fiscal conservative that he squeaks when he walks. Senator Loud, I'd like to ask you that same question. Would you support the expenditure of $10 million this session for rural economic development? Well, this $10 million, if it goes into the road fund, could be leveraged from federal government funding. And uh, right now we're talking about uh, about $20 million to put the uh, 
put the bypass around the city of Kimball, and then nobody can seem to come up with the money. So, yes, this $10 million in the road fund could leverage enough uh, federal money to get that bypass built around Kimball. Time. Also, the $10 million time. or so we Senator got. Senator Loudon, uh, my time is time up. Is up. You want so, I, I'm willing to talk about this, Senator. Thank you, Senator Chambers. President, thank you, Senator Howard. These are the kind of things that should be discussed in the context of action like this which is proposed to be taken. I think Senator Whiteman's suggestion was very, very apropos of what we are doing. This is a substantial amount of money that is being shifted from the general fund and earmarked for the Highway Trust Fund. It probably, more appropriately, should have been dealt with by the Revenue Committee. It's going to reduce the revenue that flows into the general fund forever. And that is a decision, if it's to be taken, should be done in the context of the work of a committee which deals with these matters. This money should not be shifted casually, cavalierly, with a snap of the legislative fingers, so to speak. And if I continue long enough, there might be the opportunity for some of my colleagues to think more deeply about this matter and come to realize that it's not a dispute between me One and minute. Senator Fisher. You don't owe Senator Fisher anything. She's the chair of that committee. She chose to be. This bill was referred to them. They sent it to the floor, and once out here, it's to be dealt with by all of us. And I think to move it forward would be an act of legislative irresponsibility, so I must try to stop it. I know of things that the expenditure of $10 million could benefit greatly. A lasting, significant impact could be made with that money. You don't know where this $10 million will go. You don't know how it's going to be spent. But there are programs that are proposed to be funded through A bills this session, and many of them are going to fall by the boards. That happens anyway. But an excuse is given now that didn't exist before because the money in the general fund is reduced, not through an expenditure. Time. Thank you, Mr. President. Members of the legislature, as I was saying, the general fund is going to be diminished, not as a result of an expenditure, but as a result of diverting funds, which ought to have gone into the general fund, to, in effect, the Department of Roads. You are going to diminish the state's general fund to benefit a department of state government. That should not be. I don't know if the public will be aware of what it is that this bill is going to do. It is not the kind of thing that the public pays attention to, and that's well understood. It probably is not the kind of thing that the media will do anything with. There certainly won't be an editorial, so it will be done. The public won't know, but they will certainly know when certain programs come up for funding and the legislature no, says, no, there isn't any money. There are some caregivers who've been writing to me because they are not going to have enough money available to pay the people they employ who take care of the most vulnerable people who need that care. So money is not available for that. And these are people in dire straits right now. But the $10 million can just whimsically be taken from the general fund and put into the roads department. I see Senator Fulton is back. I was waiting for him, and now I'm going to pounce. I'd like to ask Senator Fulton a question or two, if he will Senator agree. Fulton, would you yield to a question? I will. Senator Fulton, first of all, so I can get your philosophical point of view, in general, and I know you haven't been here a long time, so you, we won't even go into that, because sometimes you might say, well, you know, I don't have the right to say that. So don't, don't let any of that hinder you or modify your answer in any way that you feel would be a correct one. 
do you support the idea of taking this amount of money from the general fund and giving it to a state department in perpetuity and they will always have that amount it could rise to more than ten million dollars because the source can vary are you in favor of that being done I, if, if you're asking generally whether that should be done as a general philosophy I would have a different answer than if you are asking whether it should be applied in this particular instance. Let's take it first as the philosophy so that the context is clear in which your answer will be given. Generally, uh, not, not philosophical, no. um, I, would, I would come at and make a decision generally based on uh, uh, my, my, feel, my principle and I would apply it particularly as, it, as, uh, as my possibility here in the legislature. Now. Why? And we're speaking philosophically now, not this specific deal. We, we will come to that. Why philosophically would you be opposed to being a practice? If you were to answer affirmatively, then any risk that comes before us that is, uh, that is earmarked would be uh, grounds for being pushed through. And so by saying negatively, I allow myself to go to the next level of uh, judgment, which would be at the particular level. So. The only reason you would be opposed to that is because other departments might ask, or is there a deeper reason for this not being done as a real practice? I, I, I guess I say yes in principle because to, to answer in the affirmative opens up an infinite number of possibilities by which we could spend money, and I don't think that that would be prudent. One to minute. answer generally in the negative, I'm able to go down and look at actually why the money is being spent and for what reason and how it's being spent. Okay, now to come to this program, I presume you favor the shifting of these funds in this particular instance. Is that correct? In this, in this is, instance, yes. And why would that, what is the compelling reason that would justify you in departing from your philosophical base? Yeah. Uh, I look at this from the, uh, from the aspect of the road. If our tax policy, uh, uh, our tax policy with regard to gasoline, uh, that part of that money, that, that tax money goes to fund roads, the thought being that those who utilize gasoline utilize it on roads, thus demanding the roads to be maintained and even new roads built. The road doesn't care if it's a leased vehicle or a purchased vehicle, it's still the same amount of wear and tear. So in, in that regard, I see this as an, as an appropriate expenditure based on Time. prior policy. Okay. Thank you, Senator Chambers. Senator Cruz, you're recognized. Mr. President and colleagues, thank you. <clears throat> Mr. President, I was in a conversation with Senator Fulton, but I'm going to make him turn on his light so we can continue it because he used up some of my time and I'm out of opportunities to speak. And I want to take this opportunity, even though I'm going to create additional opportunities to speak on this issue. But I'm going to mention what this other item is that was brought to me because it's been mentioned to me by some people who are also troubled by it. And I have reason to believe that my office has been contacted by people who are disturbed. The Supreme Court set an execution date of May 5th for a man, and they didn't have the decency to let that bill we were dealing with receive a decent burial. The session is still going on. It's not impossible that that repeal bill would be considered again. But apparently we have what is known as a hanging court and they couldn't wait to set an execution date. I happen to know that this man has been suffering from depression. He had had an operation on his knee and a plate in his knee had grown loose the screws were coming up loose. He was in great, obviously, mental pain, but physical pain also. I had contacted the director of corrections because I didn't think that a man should forego his right of appeal or filing a legal action because of the pain in which he is living and cannot get treatment while being a state prisoner. So this man, in desperation, wrote a letter to the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court saying that he would not continue with the legal avenues available for him 
so set a date and execute him. If this court had any decency, they would have ordered at least a mental evaluation to consider whether or not somebody who is giving up the right to live is competent to do so. But they were so eager. I'm developing an attitude toward this court, not just because of that one situation, but they are not doing the things that earn them a higher salary. They are not acting in accord with, with principles that I consider common decency. There are some things which should be bound by the principle of being done decently and in order. What this Supreme Court has done, in my view, is highly indecent, it is obscene, it is cruel, it is vindictive, and I take it as a slap in my face. They're going to show me. I've been critical of the court. I've been critical of judges. Yeah, they can show me, but should they show me by killing somebody under circumstances that are questionable? It doesn't bother them. And I know it might cause joy in the hearts of some of my colleagues, but I'm saying on this floor, the judges can be aware of it, and I want them to be aware of it. This is one of the most awesome things that the state can do, as we have discussed for two days this week. And the court immediately, thanks to my colleagues, are going to kill a man May 5th. So you all got what you wanted. And I hope you, it makes you as happy as it makes me miserable. I'm not pleased that the court One is minute. going to authorize the state to kill somebody. And it's very appropriate that these things be called judicial executions. It's a hanging, what we call in my community, a lynch mob mentality in the court. But as I said earlier, my primary obligation is to do to this bill what the court and some of my colleagues want to see done to a fellow creature. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. And Mr. President, I would ask if Senator, Fol if Senator Fulton will continue our discussion. Senator he will. <laughs> Senator Fulton, you had stated as your general philosophical position that the type of shift occurring here, or in general the earmarking of funds, should not be a standard operation, operational procedure, but because you see this as a separate issue, that the application of your general philosophy can be suspended because this is a unique situation. Is that basically what you had said? Uh, We'll say it. You not exactly. I, the way I look at this, that generally, I would not, I would not automatically accept an expenditure that has been earmarked. I would not accept that generally. I would then look at the specific to determine whether or not I believe it's an appropriate earmarking, so to speak, or an appropriate expenditure. Okay. Now, are you aware that this really is not an expenditure? It's taking a source of revenue away from the state and giving it over to a state agency. Yes. Okay, and you're aware that it is it will go on forever unless the legislature undoes it. Yes, I am aware of that. And are you aware that this takes away any necessity for the roads department to justify the receiving of this money? It will just automatically come to them are you aware of that? Um, I, I, would, I would not accept that. There has to be a certain amount of justification in the minds of the senators voting for this. Um, I believe if there's, a, if there's an adequate level of uh, suspicion that it would be inappropriate to, uh, to appropriate these funds. I use that word a lot. Um, if there is a level of comfort that the money will be spent uh, correctly and prudently, then uh, it would be it would be appropriate to go ahead and move the funds. So I don't think that they're coming that they're able to get at this money without having some arbiter of their case. But here's the way this works: this money goes into the highway trust fund. They don't have to approach the legislature again to get that money. That source 
of revenue has now, if this bill pass, passes, been dedicated to the Highway Trust Fund, and it will go there as long as these taxes are collected on leased vehicles. You're aware that that's the way the bill works, correct? Yes. So that's why I say they don't have to justify receiving it. The legislature, by acting in this way, does away with the need for them to justify receiving it. Would you agree with that? I, I wouldn't. I think that it would justify receiving it as it's, as it's put before us today, but it would be the prerogative, it would remain the prerogative of any, of any senator uh, to question whether the money is being spent appropriately, efficiently, prudently. Uh, so I just I, I, I do accept what you're saying in that this is this money is going to be uh, appropriated uh, ad infinitum I suppose but that doesn't mean that there that there couldn't be a movement by prerogative of one of the senators to come in and question our decision that was made today or that may or may not be made today. Here's what I'm getting at, Senator Fulton. One minute. The Department of Roads does not have to come to the legislature and say allow this money to keep coming because we're doing a good job. They don't have to do anything or say anything and that money automatically goes to the trust fund. Do you agree with that? Today that's the case, yes. And it would be that way forever unless the legislature changes it. I wouldn't say that it would remain that way forever. The situation would be changed. It would be uh, less difficult for them to access the money, but I think a responsible legislature still has the prerogative to say that you, you need to justify why this money should continue. But unless the legislature changed the law, it doesn't matter what the senators say, that money is going to continue going into the Highway Trust Fund. That would be correct, yes. I, I agree. Now, if at the time that an unwise decision is being made, the senators are willy-nilly going to approve it, it's not likely that they're going to turn around and take back from the Highway Trust Fund what they put in it, is it? It's probably unlikely. Yes, I could agree with that. Time. Perfect. Thank you, Mr. President. I didn't hear everything Senator Rakes said, but I think I heard him say something about tires, batteries, whatnot, and if money derived from taxing those items were to go into the Highway Trust Fund, he wouldn't agree with that. So I'd like to ask him a question to be sure that I understood him. Senator Rakes, would you yield to a question yes. from Senator Chambers? Senator Rakes... Did you say words to that effect? I did, Senator. And why would that be? Why would that be your position? Because without those items, a car could not operate, and the car runs on the road, and that's the basis for people saying, take this $10 million from the general fund. Why would not everything related to a vehicle that produces taxes go to the Highway Trust Fund? Why well, should that not be? It's a fair point. Uh, we have, I, I would argue, historically drawn a line that the sales tax revenue from the sales of vehicles goes into the Highway Trust Fund. All the other repair items, the road building items or whatever, does not. I think this particular bill is nothing more than keeping our policy consistent. Senator Rakes, how many years would a policy have to be, how many years would a direction have to be in existence before you would call it a policy of the state? More than five. This money from leased vehicles has been the policy of the state for 40 years. So you say that this policy has less standing than other policies because we're dealing with the Highway Trust Fund? Well, if five does it, we have eight times that amount of number of years. But go ahead if you'd the, like to The answer. Highway Trust Fund, yeah, I, I think you're right on, on, on the number of years. But what, in my view at least, has happened is that over the years, uh, maybe most recently, purchases of vehicles has in effect been replaced by long-term leases. But the function of a purchase versus a long-term lease is largely the same. It's to basically take permanent possession of a vehicle or as long as you typically would keep a vehicle. The reason for the lease instead of the purchase is one having to do with perhaps taxes or business arrangements or that sort of, sort of thing. But as this leasing has become more prominent 
relative to purchases, it's sort of uh, shifted, given our policy, it's shifted sales tax receipt, receipts out of the highway trust fund. In my view, this is simply putting back what would have been in the trust for fund had the practice of buying cars instead of acquiring them on long-term leases continued up to the present day. But Senator Rakes, if we're going to use that line of reasoning, if there had been no sales tax on a vehicle that is purchased or leased, there would have been no tax revenue going either into the highway trust fund or the general fund. Isn't that true? You're if, saying if... If there had been no sales tax, there'd be no money going into the highway trust fund or the general fund as a result of the sale or lease of these vehicles. Isn't that true? You're talking about zero sales, a uh, rate yes. of zero on... Yes. Yeah, I would agree with that. But there is a tax, and a decision was made as to where that tax money should go. And that, to me, is the policy that was established. One minute. That you have a category of vehicles here, or a way they're going to be made available to the ultimate user. And the tax money from that trend, and I'm using that for the sake of trying to get to my point, is going to go into the general fund, and it's always been that way. So how can that be said not to be the policy? However, my time is up, but I assure you we'll have time to continue our discussion. I won't try to get an answer because my time is up now. Thank you, Mr. President. And I'll ask for a call of the House. Thank you, Mr. President. Members of the legislature, it is one thing to vote against these motions. There is a point coming when a vote will have to be given to advance this bill, and that's when we will really see who those are who support shifting this money. I still call it a raid on the general fund. Now, Senator Fisher has been here long enough to know better, but the new senators have not. If you think that the Department of Roads and the Highway Trust Fund are treated like any other agency or any other fund, you are absolutely wrong. If that's your view, you are wrong. That fund has been referred to by those who support it and those who are opposed to this handle as the sacred cow that it is not to be touched. There have been a, an occasion every now and then when there may have been a brush up against that fund, but it's not going to be easy to get 25 senators to do anything to diminish that which is made available to that highway trust fund. New people don't know that, but you're going to find out. This policy shift, in addition to moving the money, is something that needs to be thought about deeply. But whereas there are other senators who will say on other issues, if we do this, the next thing we're going to do is that. They won't say that on this matter. They say by their actions and their words as I interpret them. This is done in a vacuum. There will be the irresponsible act placed this once and it won't be placed anymore and after it's done everybody will forget it, it'll go away and that ten million dollars will flow into the highway trust fund forever. And that's what is going to happen. I'd like to ask Senator Rakes a question or two if he will respond. Senator Rakes, would you yield to a question from Senator Chambers? Yes. Senator Rakes, do you think it would be difficult to obtain enough support on the floor of the legislature to take back from the Highway Trust Fund this $10 million windfall that will be granted if this bill passes? Um, I, I, I think that would be a, 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 tough, a tough chore. Uh, for a couple of reasons. One of them is that, uh, as, as we've kind of seen this session, uh, there are a number of efforts underway to, to try to grab, I shouldn't say grab, try to... Steal. Uh, yeah, maybe that's a better term. Uh, money from various sources to get into or to put into the Highway Trust Fund because, as I mentioned earlier, at least my view is uh, it's, it's no longer 
probably a sustainable procedure for building and maintaining roads in Nebraska. That's a very forthright answer, Senator Rakes, and I agree with you. And the, sen the people on this floor know that. Senator Rakes, have you ever heard of or read of any state issuing general obligation bonds to carry on a road building program or any portion of it? You know, I'm not really familiar, but I, I think uh, there are some states that do that. And have those states gone broke or well, let me ask the question a different way. Apparently, it works for those states. Could we conclude that if that is the course they're pursuing? Well, maybe a better way to say it is it's worked so far for yes. some of the states. Okay. Now, Senator Rakes, are you in favor of piecemealing providing money for the Department of Roads? Here a little, there a little, then a big chunk like this, if it can be pulled off. No, I'm not. Do no. you think that if the Department of Roads, if the Highway Trust Fund, let me use that term even if it's not strictly appropriate all the time so I don't have to keep jumping back and forth. If the Highway Trust Fund is in trouble, should there be a comprehensive examination of how roads not only are funded, but whether there are wise decisions made in terms of where roads will be built and the type of road being built. If you're asking whether I think there needs to be a comprehensive examination of number one, where you're going to get money to fund roads, and number two, how you're going to control the need for road building and maintenance, yes. And Senator Rates, if that is not done, then we could be proceeding for some time in the future, not you and I, because they might be on the verge of getting us out of here, but whoever is left in this fashion of piecemealing and picking up what you can here and picking up what you can there. Would you agree with that? That is a danger. And so I, like I mentioned earlier, this is, this is the end of the line as far as I'm concerned. Senator Rakes. If you're, Im do you believe you have Im an immortal soul, first of all? Uh, if that's not too personal repeat a question. Repeat that question. Do you believe that you have an immortal, not immoral, do you believe you have an immortal soul? Whatever that may be. Maybe the first word would be more appropriately describing <laughs> my soul, but. Well, let me, let me not reach that level of philosophical or theological consideration, if your life depended on it, would you keep your life and do away with this bill or support this bill at the cost of your life? If you would, if you would run through my agenda tomorrow for oh. me, maybe I could make a better decision on that. I'll withdraw that question. And, Senator, you've answered the questions that I, I wanted to put to you very forthrightly. Thank you. Members of the legislature, it is known that this that we're doing is not wise. If there's a problem, and I'll concede for the sake of the discussion, there may be, this is not the way to solve it. This is the first time since I've been here that somebody tried to take money that was to be raised from a tax on some form of tobacco and put it into the highway allocation fund. That shows desperation. In my frame of reference, it shows something even more sinister than that, that we're prepared to do anything, just throw all rationality out the window to try to get some money into this fund, which people are saying is in trouble. Nobody, as far as I'm aware of, has offered a bill and accompanied it with an A bill to do a thorough study of the state roads and the issues that Senator Rakes and I were discussing. I don't want to repeat all that. That has not been offered. It's much easier to get the lunkheads in the legislature, and that's what they consider you all, to bring you something like this, to get the lunkheads in the legislature to throw aside all rationality, 
all responsible legislating and do this for the Department of Roads. The fact that you're doing it for the Department of Roads demonstrates that it's different from every other state agency. The fact that you're doing it for the Highway Trust Fund shows that it's different as far as handling from the way any other fund would be handled. So that lets you know that there would be a different level of difficulty in trying to undo it once it is done. This will be there forever. Then they'll come back and say, well, you did that. You, now you've got to go further. You've acknowledged that the fund is in trouble. Having acknowledged that, you're responsible to give some money, and the senators will roll over and do it. I have not heard one compelling argument to justify this. We're one not minute. just talking about $10 million. We're talking about the way we legislate, how we view the general fund and the way it ought to be dealt with. Senator Fulton at least took the time to give the illogical, unreasonable, so-called rationale for his unreasonable, untenable position. And wherever he is, he hears what I'm saying. <laughs> but at least he did. And here he comes. That reminds me of a radio program. I may have mentioned it before it started. Henry, Henry Aldrich. And from someplace far away, coming, mother. And then you'd hear these little footsteps as Henry Aldrich came running home in response to his mother's summons. I know how to summon Senator Fulton, but it's not to put him through an interrogation of the kind that happened earlier. But since I'm going to take this time, I'm going to take it hammering away time. on some issues. To address uh, some questions to Senator Chamber. Chambers. Senator Chambers, would you yield to questions from Senator Carlson? I think he said Chambers, Chambers, so my answer is yes, yes. <laughs> Thank you, Senator Chambers. You know, I'm asking a question now that goes before your time. So don't count on it. You uh, may or may not know the exact answer, but this sales tax on leased vehicles, I believe, started in the 1960s. Yes, we were told that it started going into the general fund in 1967. Okay. Would it be, in your opinion, at that time that was legislative action that uh, allowed that to take place? Yes. And uh, if that being the case, and I would agree with you, at any time could the legislature have changed it uh, to allow it to go into the Highway Trust Fund? Yes, that could be done, yes. Okay. Would you agree that probably in the 1960s the amount of money that was generated by sales tax on leased vehicles was probably a rather small amount? Compared to what's happening now, yes. Now, at some point in time, the sales tax grew to a larger significant amount. Would you agree? Yes, and it caused the monsters and demons of greed to rear their ugly heads, as in the case of this bill. Okay. Uh, in your time in the legislature, and you may have answered this, said this before, and I kind of missed it because I was trying to put together my questions I wanted to ask. In your time in the legislature, has the situation of sales tax on leased vehicles been discussed? As, I don't know in what uh, as, you as mean. being something that should go to the Highway Trust Fund. I don't remember that having happened, but that doesn't mean it never has. Okay. Is it understandable that many years could have passed before someone realized how much money the sales tax on leased vehicles involved? No, somebody would have realized it a long time ago. Some people may not have been aware, but you said years passed before someone realized. Well, I think a lot of someone's realized how much tax was being raised, and I think this bill would not have come into play if, as Senator Fisher pointed out in justifying it, the high cost of gasoline had not resulted in people purchasing less gasoline, therefore less money was derived from the fuel tax. Therefore, they need to find a source of revenue for the Highway Trust Fund, and that's why this bill is here. Okay. I, I would say I'm a little surprised that this uh, has not come up previously as an amount significant enough that uh, it, it would have been addressed before now, but, but that's, that's the case. Uh, is it in the power of the legislature to make this shift, whether you agree with it or not? Oh, unquestionably. Okay. And this is uh, why we have the debate. 
This is why we will vote, and this is why, for now, we will accept the outcome. And uh, there's always next year and another session. Thank you. Sure. Senator Chambers, you're recognized to speak on the bracket motion. Mr. President, members of the legislature, the bracket motion is not a kill motion. The speaker can put the bill on the agenda whenever he chooses to do so. Senator Senawicki had echoed what Senator Whiteman said earlier. This proposition should not be dealt with as a standalone item. It should be reviewed, evaluated, and analyzed in the context of what is happening in the Appropriations Committee and especially the Revenue Committee. It's just out here. These people who support this kind of approach feel that they can more easily justify it if it is sticking out here by itself. If you took a comprehensive view, people would see the skewing effect that it has on the budget, on the money available for other programs, and the giving over to this highway trust fund, a source that makes up a part of the state's tax base. This legislature could cut the state sales tax out altogether if it chose to do so. It could eliminate taxes on income if it chose to do so. The legislature has the authority to act in all those areas in the way it sees fit. Some courses of action, however, would be very irresponsible and destructive. What we're dealing with here is a complex issue, how the roads are funded in Nebraska. Senator Fisher mentioned the motor fuel tax. And when it comes to the ranking of these states in terms of how high their tax on fuel is, Nebraska ranks eighth, a higher tax than 42 other states and the District of Columbia. Some of the states which have a lower tax rate than Nebraska, Texas is 26th, Illinois 31st, there's a tie among Illinois and Michigan at 31st. California is 34th, Florida is 47th, New Jersey is 49th, and I will give you the states that have a higher tax rate than Nebraska. New York, Washington, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, North Carolina, Rhode Island, Ohio, then Nebraska. High gas tax rate. Care for its children, it's much lower than most of the states. Anything that pertains to improving the quality of life of the citizens, Nebraska is very, very low. But when it comes to yielding to special interest groups, that's what we're dealing with here. Nebraska is among the states at the very top, which means they're an easy mark. And the way this bill is being handled proves what an easy mark the Nebraska legislature is. You would not do this with reference to any other agency in this state. You don't say because we trust the governor and he is the chief executive officer of the state, automatically $15 million will be available to the governor to spend any way he or she pleases One minute. forever. You wouldn't pass anything like that. But when you come to a department whose record bears scrutiny that it is not getting, you just roll over and say you're going to reduce the state's tax base. The governor is going to cut taxes while at the same time reducing the base from which taxes can be derived. That, as Mr. Spock of Star Trek fame would say, Captain, that is illogical. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Senator Chambers. Your light is next. You may continue speaking. Thank you. 
members of the legislature sticking with the Star Trek imagery. It can be so frustrating down here dealing with the people on this floor. That's what being in the legislature means. I sometimes wish there was a little device on my chest that I could tap and say, beam me up, Scotty, and just get away from it all for a while. But that's impossible. So once you're in the cauldron, you have to stay there. And that's what I intend to do on this bill. But the bracket motion is not a kill motion. If you have become convinced that more discussion ought to be given to this bill, vote to bracket it. That does not kill the bill. And it gives the chance for mature deliberation by all those who want to engage in it. I realize that when the body has been here as long as they feel like they've been here today, but it's only noon. We've only been here three hours, just three hours. And people feel like they've been here an eternity. My brothers and sisters, friends, enemies, and neutrals, you wait till the session gets rolling. And after 10 hours, I will say what I think was John Paul Jones said, I have not yet begun to fight. I don't quit. However, I can be reasoned with. I can be persuaded to compromise. All of that is a part of the give and take. And that's what we're engaging in here this morning, Senator Carlson. I'm taking time and giving my views. So I'm responsible for the give and take alone. This is not an inconsequential issue. Look beyond the amount of money to what we're doing. Senator Fulton, in his way of looking at things, is able to separate this out and say it is unique and it won't be done as a practice. If you were an agency and you wanted money, once the legislature set the precedent, would you not try to do the same thing? There's a guy named Shaka Zulu, and he was in a discussion about certain things that would or would not be done. So to make his point to these people who were talking to him, he said the following, a leopard does not have wings, therefore a leopard cannot fly. But if a leopard were offered wings so that he could fly, do you think the leopard would turn down those wings? And the answer obviously would be no. The leopard would take those wings. So. If the means are here in the rules for me to fight this bad legislation, you think I'm not going to make use of those rules to do so? If others say they wouldn't do it, that's all right because they're not me. They are not as convinced as I am that certain things ought to be fought to the bitter end. This is one of those that I see in that light. One minute. I have said over and over that the prerogatives of the legislature are important to me, and they always will be as long as I'm here. I've always said I will play within the rules, and I shall, always. And I usually vote against the rules when they're being adopted so that it's clear I'm not playing by rules I put in place. I'm playing by rules that my colleagues put in place. Then they get upset with me when I make use of the rules. Why are the rules there to govern how we conduct business? And because I have more heart, nerve, stamina, and determination than others, am I to be condemned for operating under the rules that you all put in place? Or did you put the rules there because you expected nobody to make use of them? Then I have to be a teacher and an instructor by my example. That my example is going to be put forth by the way I fight against this bill. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Senator Chambers. Thank you, Mr. President. Members of the legislature, 
I am not through with this bill. I'm not through by a long shot. There are the motions I intend to make, and I intend to fight. I appreciate Senator Senawicki's contribution to the discussion, but he didn't need to get into the discussion to give me a break. What I prefer, instead of other people talking, maybe to give me a break, give me their time so that I can continue to talk and give you all the hope that springs eternal in the human breast that I may get tired and wear down. But after three hours? No way. We haven't even gotten started good yet. So don't think that I'm going to wear down. But in the course of presenting these arguments, repetitive though they may be, one might lodge in the crevice of somebody's brain when he or she has the guard lowered and suddenly that light bulb will go off or turn on in the brain, Senator Carlson, and they will scream, Eureka, I have found it. I see. I was blind, but now I see. I'm going to tell you all how a con man got captured. The king was passing through a town, and there was this group of hustlers and this man was in the town square dancing around and everybody said to the king when he asked why is this going on this man was born blind and the king said well how did he regain his sight they said we're not sure the king said when did he regain his sight they said just this morning because people knew the king was coming through so the king said I must test this so the king approached the man. He said, is it true that you were born blind? The man said, yes, your honor. He said, how old are you? He said, 30 years old. So the king said, in those 30 years, you've never been able to see. The man said, that is true, your highness. The king said, but you can see now. The man said, yes. The king said, what color is my robe? The man said, purple, your highness. The king said, take this man away and throw him in the dungeon for lying, because if he was born blind, how does he know purple when he sees it? Think. He would not have known a color, because he had never seen a color. People live life at the surface, but others think, and they go below the surface. So my hope has to be that at some point, something I say is going to break through that film and you begin to think with the brains you were born with, you will consider what we as a legislature are supposed to do. We will see the need to maintain the integrity of the general fund. We will know that the Highway Trust Fund does not have a greater degree of importance than the general fund and the way we as a legislature deal with that fund and conduct our business. Senator Carlson, I will concede every time somebody asks me that the legislature can do what is being attempted now. If they couldn't do it, I wouldn't have to fight like this. But because the legislature can, I've got to put every roadblock into their path that I can. Some people have heard of a guy, I'll go into that later, but he was an Englishman. One minute. And he was, they were having a fight with some people in Scotland. And this man said, by the bowels of Christ, consider that you may be mistaken, trying to tell them you cannot beat this army. Concede that you're mistaken and give it up. They chose not to. And they were defeated in detail, as they say in military circles. I won't tell you the name of the battle, but it is famous. Consider that what this bill is proposing is mistaken. And I have to create the opportunity for as much thought to be put into this as possible. If you vote to bracket this bill, that is not a kill motion. Senator Fisher may believe time what she chooses. Thank you, Mr. President.
I would ask for a call of the house.